Wow. This is surreal. This is seriously surreal. The future of our world is uncertain. Studies of climate change are in agreement, and the forecast isn't looking good. But there is hope. In this film, we'll follow along with Claudia Moore on a journey from Stockholm to Svalbard, from modern civilization to a place where there are more polar bears than humans, a place where the sun disappears during the several month long polar night. It's just a really, almost surreal experience to come to the end of the world, to this crazy place and do these measurements. So what do we need? 250 of these. Yeah, let's get some bigger ones also. So we can take those as well. Claudia Moore is one of the scientists taking part in the struggle to understand the climate. What is actually happening to the Earth's air? And how are dark particles over the Arctic going to affect our future? You can put it in a box. So we look at, on the one hand, air quality or air pollution. And then the other big topic is climate. Claudia? Yes? Are we taking these? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. For months, they pack and plan for their trip to the Arctic, a trip that none of them has ever done before. Oh, yeah. yeah, then let's just see. I, I really don't know. I've never measured in, in a place like this. I really don't know. It could be a problem that the inlet will ice up, actually. And they'll run into problems with the temperature, although it might not be the way one would think. In Svalbard, they're going to measure tiny, tiny particles in the air and in the clouds. We need particles in the air to form the clouds. So without particles in the air, we wouldn't have clouds. It's super, super complex. There's so many different things doing stuff with each other. So we have to still like understand a lot of on, on the way to, to get this complete picture. And to do this, the technology required is way beyond the ordinary. Let's talk about your instruments. Yeah, easy. <laughs> you like them? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they're annoying, but... <laughs> Start throwing. The star here is this instrument, a mass spectrometer called Figaro. Basically, it's um, a sophisticated machine to look at what's in a particle. And Figaro is traveling That's more than anyone else in the team. It travels like crazy. <laughs> so I think in this one year, we sent it to India, and then we were measuring in the most dirty place one can imagine. It went directly to Switzerland for some lab studies, and then it came home, and then it had to come to the Arctic. <laughs> You have to ship it, and you never know what's happening during transport. And always when we switch them on, it's like, will it work, will it not work? Yeah, it's, <laughs> there's a bit yeah. of suspense always. So Figaro leaves in advance via Norway and Tromsø by boat, all the way up to Niola Sund and Zeppelin Mountain. The particles that Figaro measures come largely from natural sources, such as the sea, trees, and sand. But a proportion of these are emissions from us, humans. There are thousands of different airborne particles. They all differ in size from the ones you see, like soot and salt, to ones so small that they can barely be seen even with a microscope. They also differ in function. Some help to form clouds, some heat the earth, some cool it down. This is why researchers need to map exactly what they look like, what properties they have, and where they come from to understand how they affect the climate. And so Claudia and Sophie's journey toward the research station in Niola Sund begins. Over the course of two weeks, they'll make sure that everything is installed correctly, that the instruments are functional and measure the right particles during the year they will be studying the Arctic air and clouds. It started quite nicely in Stockholm. I think we were a bit delayed, but then already when we went to Oslo, it was really weird to kind of land in Oslo and there was so much snow. So it felt like, okay, our trip north is, is starting for real. Then when we landed in Longyearbyen, 
It was really super windy and snowy and eventually I think the pilot just dropped the plane. <laughs> like I can't hold it anymore, that's it. The weather causes problems. The small plane that will be taking Claudia and Sophie to the research station cannot take off. They are stuck in Long Yerbian. If I start it now, it's, yeah, it's not requiring. We don't have any data from November. Not only are they stuck, but now it seems that there's a problem with Figaro as well. Oh no. Oh no. Check if it's connected like inside. Okay, now we're offline. I don't know what happened. So what are you gonna do now? Uh, wait until we get an airplane. <laughs> Like, oof, you, you're sitting in this darkness and you know you have a lot of work to do and all you want is just to go there. The weather seemed fine an hour ago, right? Yeah, I mean, but I don't know what yeah. fine means. It's not snowing, but it's still, as far as I can see, a bit cloudy, a bit foggy. It actually is snowing. Okay. This starts to be a bit stressful. The hotel that they end up at once housed miners. Remnants of coal mines are everywhere in Svalbard. But today, there is only one mine in operation in Longyearbyen. The people who live here not only need to find new ways to support themselves, they are facing the trials of the escalating climate change as well. Like, for example, as the permafrost thaws, the houses here are beginning to fall down. We know that the Arctic environment is especially vulnerable to climate change. Like it's warming up much faster than the rest of the planet. It's very kind of sensitive ecosystem that is threatened now by climate change. We see that there's less snow cover, less ice, and we still don't understand why the Arctic is warming so much faster. What we do know is that the sun's rays constantly warm the Earth. When the rays are reflected by light-colored clouds, they bounce back into space again. But when humans release dark particles, the sun's rays are not reflected, and the Earth warms up instead. But not all of the particles we emit are dark. Some of the emissions, such as sulfate and nitrate, are light. With them, the sun's rays bounce back into space and the Earth cools down. So they are, on average, having a bit of a cooling effect, but how much it is in the end is really hard to assess. And like our research tries to help in this direction. After two nights and many problems that don't seem to be solvable, the message finally comes that the flight will be taking off for Niola Sund. That's super exciting. I'm really nervous. <laughs> oh, man. Claudia Moore is originally from Switzerland. I wasn't someone who always knew what I wanted to be. When I started to go in this direction, for me, it was really like the worry about the planet and I wanted to know more about how Earth works because only when we understand we can actually do something about it and hopefully improve the situation. And then there's also this aspect of just being curious, just wanting to know more. As a scientist, I hope that I can contribute to more knowledge about how the planet works. And as a person, like as a human being, I hope that we will use the knowledge and hopefully improve like life on our planet for everyone. Ni Ola Sund is the world's northernmost settlement. It is home to 35 residents year round. 
What used to be a mining village now revolves entirely around polar research. So Claudia and Sophie have finally arrived and will soon be taking the cable car up to the station at the top of Zeppelin Mountain. Oh, wow. Here That's we are. pretty amazing. Got Excellent. It. Oh, you bought my little pile of things? Yes. Thanks. Everything. We are now on our way up with the cable car. That's crazy. We just saw in the Arctic in a tiny cable car. <laughs> I'm freaking out right now. This is not the most insane job you can imagine. Who does that? <laughs> right? I mean, that's super yeah. surreal. If anything goes wrong, we've got to jump out of it. And I mean, rappelling down at this altitude, it's creepy. Can you even do it? What a commute. Beautiful sign. Now we need to tell them that we're up, right? Once at the top, they realize what's wrong with Figaro. So what do we have yeah, here? Like, that's is, the old compartment. Oh, it's I really warm. This, yeah, this is one color. It's crazy yeah. warm. Huh? Sophie, this instrument is too warm. Like, it's not. The data acquisition card is 77 degrees. That's what? not working, yeah. Now we have the problem that in our room there is no air conditioning. It's actually quite ironic. We are in winter in the Arctic and it's too hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, he is schön. Oh, he is schön kalt. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But I, I mean, we have those small fans. So now we have to install cooling in the Arctic to have those measurements. Oh. <laughs> we made in Bolivia. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, does this... Uh, it's super safe. Way? No, no, it's perfect. Do we have some... Yeah, we have screws here. Having to be a bit creative and maybe a bit chaotic, I, I really like it. That, like, you're in one place and you have a certain set of tools and there's just nothing else. And you have to make it happen now somehow. And in a way, I, I really like this, like, to do, having to do this problem solving under a bit of pressure. It's kind of nice also. It's doing 1500. It works. It's 1500 is okay. Figaro starts recovering and will soon be able to collect data from the Arctic air and clouds again. It's a bit a diva, this instrument. It needs a lot of attention and like... <laughs> so it sucks in the air and everything that's in the air, like all the molecules are then being measured. But then we have made it a bit more complicated so that we can measure particles as well. And that just needs a lot of different things. We need to have like flows of nitrogen and flows of artificial air, and that needs to be controlled by these mass flow controllers. And, but this is actually a bit a special inlet. So this inlet allows us to only look at cloud droplets, and then we can see what's inside the cloud droplets. And this is something no one has done so far with this instrument. So that, we're trying this for the first time. That's super exciting. Figaro is one of many instruments located around the world that collect data in a network of measuring stations. To map and understand where the particles come from and how they affect the Earth and our climate. And this will help us in deciding how we should build our cities and manage our pollution. In this environment where we are here now, the compounds that we are measuring, are they important for the clouds or not? That's what I want to figure out. Yeah. This one just doesn't work anymore. That's what we said. Claudia continues to take care of her instruments during her stay at Svalbard. And it is here at the top of Zeppelin Mountain, at the world's northernmost settlement, 
We leave Claudia Moore as she continues the struggle to find some of the clues for how to solve what could be Earth's biggest crisis ever. I think it would make us very proud Yay! if the work that we do here could help us understand this big problem of climate change, especially in the Arctic, a bit better. That's, that's for sure.